anytime you are sewing more than one of a quilt block, I suggest you stack it on top of itself like I have here. So I'm sewing four identical blocks. So I have four of each little piece stacked on top, four squares, four geese, four square and square units because I'm making the starling quilt pattern. And I'm gonna chain piece each section and then I'm going to chain piece it all together. And then in the end, I'll have, well, I'll have four blocks. <laughs> Okay, so let's do it. Uh, first, I'm just going to grab these two units. So I'm going to grab a goose and a square, and I'm going to send it on through my machine. Now, if you like using a liter piece of fabric, oh wow, there's some, this is some old fleece. <laughs> I'm going to use it as a liter piece. A liter piece is a piece of fabric you just send through your machine first so that your first few stitches uh, when you're sewing are the exact same as your middle stitches. You know how sometimes you can send fabric through your sewing machine and like the feed dogs just really get after it and you can get a little bird's nest or you can just get like some wonkiness or even just looser stitches. Like we don't want looser stitches. Okay, so I'm just gonna use that, this weird piece of whatever, whatever that I have. Um, and I'm going to send it on through. Okay, I'm going to do the exact same thing. Next block, I got my goose. I got my square. Here I go. I line it up. And I don't need a leader piece again because... When you chain piece, you already have that built-in leader piece, which is uh, one of the reasons we love chain piecing. It saves time. It helps secure your stitches. And it saves thread. You're not wasting, you know, all of that in-between thread. Okay, I'm going to continue. Continue now. I'm gonna take my square and square right here. This is my next section. So I'm gonna end up making this whole right side and then I'm gonna snip all my threads. Or actually, I wouldn't even need to snip my threads. Hmm. That'll be an in the moment decision. I'm gonna take my goose. Here we go. And I am going to pin this time because we're covering a little bit more space. The great thing about starling, if I just uh, talk a little bit about starling, is that this inner square, the square in the square, it's floating. So if it wasn't floating, this would be thinner and you'd be trying to match up this little corner right here. But because it's floating, you don't really have to think too hard. You don't have to like extra carefully pin. But I am gonna pin because I like it when my edges line up. So here I go. I'm just gonna do two pins because I don't need to line up that center portion. I'm going to send it on through. And this is something you could even prep while you're placing all of your blocks next to your sewing machine. I sew over my pens. <laughs> the things I don't mean to do publicly. <laughs> oh, you know what? I'm going to show you something. Cut. Change camera. Change camera angle. <laughs> Okay, so what I want to show you is this little seam intersection right here. So this was my goose. I call it my goose beak. Um, and if you want to make sure your little goose beak is uh, very pointy, you want to try to sew in between this, these little um, triangles, so along this intersection. So here we go. Hopefully it's not too vibrating because you know how sewing machines get all uh, jumpy. I'm going to go slowly so you can see. Now, if I continued on my little path, I might have been shy of that goose beak. So I'm just gonna pause. I like to have my needle down. Uh, hopefully you can see, this is a, a really tiny thing to see. There we go. All right, together now. Oh, look at that, right on top. So I had to go just a bit wide, but then I make up for it and I get right back into my quarter inch seam allowance. There we go. All right, I'm not gonna sew over this pin <laughs> because I, I never sew over pins. Okay, 
Okay, so I sewed all of the right side of my blocks. And now I'm going, I am going to snip just because there's a lot going on and I think, I think I would get tangled. <laughs> um, but I do challenge you, you know, if you're like, what would happen if I didn't snip? Um, you could probably do it. Yeah, you could probably do it. Okay, I'm going to place it back in its pile. So right now I have four piles of this unit right here. It's a goose and a block. Place that right back at the bottom where it's supposed to go. Here I have a goose and a square and a square. So I'm gonna place all of those on top of each other. Whoopsie daisy, that's a pen. <laughs> a goose and a square, snippy snips, and a goose and a square, okay? Yes, you definitely don't have to snip. I just think I would, I would get tangled, yes. Okay. I'm snipping, I'm piling, I'm ready to go. This is gonna start going pretty quickly. Um, I'm not gonna press, nope, gonna do that at the very end. All of my seams are gonna get pressed at the end. So that's another thing that speeds up. Um, so here we go. I'm gonna take, so right now I have this unit sewn together and it's gonna get a square sewn to the bottom. Neat, oh, just like that. And I'm gonna speed, 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 go along. Maybe I'll do like some cool fast forward motion. Uh, Let's be real. I don't know if I really know how to do that in photo, iMovie. <laughs> iMovie is how I edit. <laughs> um, okay, so I'm gonna just keep sewing along and then we'll meet back here and uh, I'll show you the finished block. It's gonna be cool.